Hey Free 3 Gang, welcome back to another video. So today, you guys have requested this for so long, so I'm finally gonna give it to you. And in fact, I'm gonna give it to you in the form of a spreadsheet so that you can refer to it uh, maybe like down the road, right? So I might just, you know, edit this every now and then if I find that I have the time or maybe, you know, some of you guys probably gave me some really good advice on to how to build some of the different aspects as well. Like for example, Chloe with Zeus and all that, that could be very relevant. So I'm gonna talk about all the different, you know, different kinds of ways that you can build all of your aspects from the early game to the mid game to the end game and obviously I'm just simply sorting according to Kronos, Apep and Fafnir but generally this will also make a lot of sense. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so we're gonna skip some of the aspects that we don't really need to talk about. Okay, so we're gonna start off with like Baroness for example. Okay, so the way you want to build her is gonna be Windwalker, Master Growth. Obviously, when you can start doing a pet, then you might want to change, you know, your Master Growth to Avatara. And the reason why she's so good with Avatara is she counters with a defense break and she also multi hits, which makes her really good for Fafnir. So that counter attack can be really good, you know, to to delete three of the Fafnir's shields when he cuts his shield. Uh, moving on to Charmers, obviously War Machine is gonna be a really good choice. And in fact, I will use War Machine all the way to the end game because it's attack attack skill of the enemy's max HP which is capped by his own attack power. So War Machine is going to be very important. Thor can be quite good if your attack power is a lot as well, but generally you want to juggle both attack power and your crit damage. Now moving on to Chang Pu, she's going to be running with Windwalker Master Growth for the start. Actually, you know what, most of the supports are going to be running with Windwalker Master Growth, so this is like key starter set, right? But she's going to evolve into Ocean Waves and Master Growth. Now the reason why I'm using Ocean Waves here is because uh, her cooldowns are generally very short, so if you manage to proc an Ocean Wave, you can almost perpetually cast your heals all the time, right? And Master Growth is going to be quite good for her support. She don't really need like Adamantine and Avatara for two reasons, Right, so Avatar is not going to be so good for her because she reduces AP on her first skill. But the thing is, you're not going to be reducing AP when you counter attack because the enemy already has zero AP. And as for Adamantine, the reason why it's not so good is because she's going to be built with like you know a mixture of attack and HP. So she's not going to have so much max HP for Adamantine to make a lot of sense. Well, this is just my opinion. So this is the way I'll build her, for example. Now moving on to Drew, yes, I've talked about him so many times. It's just basically War Machine Fiery and eventually Thor Fiery and something like that. Actually, you know, I can do the same for Freddy as well, but, but on second thought, I think I'll just remove it back. Okay, so now the reason why I want to just stick to Ocean Waves and Avatara or Hades and Avatara on Freddy is because he works really well with just these two sets. So Ocean Waves is going to help him with his uptime in his standoff buff. It's going to help him get his standoff buff very regularly. And Hades is also really good for his self-sustain, which is like, you know, he's kind of like a bruiser anyway, so Hades might make a lot of sense. And in fact, I might even just want to add like a different main stat over here, right? So for example, we can actually do something like this and HP. Yep, just like that. So he becomes a really good bruiser and his damage depends on how low his HP gets. So it can be quite important for him to have some decent HP. Now moving on to Jeanne. So she's becoming one of my most favorite aspects right now. One of them, okay? So Ocean Waves Avatara, this works really good on her. Avatara is exceptional on her because you're gonna counter attack with a stun. And most of the time when you land a stun from a counter attack, that's the end for the enemy. And obviously, you know, she works really well with HP, HP speed as with like most of the supports in the game. Now next one, Liao, I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about him because I feel like he has a lot of potential in holo battles and in some point war as well. So I think Ocean Waves Adamantine works really well for him. He does not need Apollo to land his debuff, the Devour debuff, because it always lands. So I think Ocean Waves and Adamantine can be quite solid for him, right? HP, HP speed is probably the way to go for him. And now Melanie, right? Okay, so Avatara is very important for Melanie because when you counter attack, the enemy has zero AP. Now when the enemy has zero AP, you are going to petrify them. So she's quite broken in this sense. Avatara is very good for Melanie. Now next one, Tang Yun. Okay, so he has a plethora of builds in my opinion, right? So most players are going to go with like Warmer Machine or Hades, but I personally want to go with Ocean Waves, that's why it's over here. Eventually, you're going to move on to Thor Avatar. I think this is where he becomes very powerful. He can start to like, you know, one shot Donuts and all that, or even one shot Hype in the Point War and Holo Battle. So I think he has a lot of value with uh, Thor Avatar in the future. But the way you want to build him is mostly going to be crit damage, attack, attack. You may not want to use speed unless you are using him for Fafnir, which I am. So therefore, I'm using speed over here. Now, Anki Chai, I've talked about this so many times. Ocean Waves Avatar, this is the perfect kit for him. Now, for Suha, there are two ways that you can build her, right? Ocean Waves, I think. Think is probably the way to go eventually, but Windwalker is also a pretty nice start. So Windwalker Adamantine, Ocean Waves Adamantine this is really good. Now moving on to Anesidora, so I, I recently just gave her a bit of a showcase. So Ocean Waves Adamantine is super good for her. But of course, if you guys feel like you know there are some other stats that I should have included in some of the other experts above or even below, do let me know down in the comments below and I will look at it. Okay, next one we have SNL, right? Windwalker Adamantine, Ocean Waves Adamantine, pretty straightforward. Windwalker mostly for PvP, Ocean Waves mostly for PvE. Next one, Catherine. Okay, so I've said before, she's one of the few experts that really benefit from Astro Witchcraft. So actually, you know what? I might even remove this and just recommend you to build her with Astro Witchcraft. I think she's really good with that. Now next, we're going to take a look at Chloe. So I've talked about her before, War Machine or Hades, perfect sets for her. And Dahlia, okay. So even though Dahlia's 
says Windwalker Adamantine, honestly you can build her with whatever, right? You can build her with Windwalker Fiery or just Windwalker and a Broken Kit as long as you give her a lot of speed. So ideally she needs to have a lot of speed and it really depends on whether you want to make her like a supporter or you want to make her like more like a DPS Esper. Both also works as well. Then moving on to Ira, right? Okay, so at the start, you're probably going to use her in your PvP, especially in the early game, right? So she's going to be really good with Windwalker and Apollo just to, you know, do the crowd control at the start of the fight. But eventually, you're not going to use her so much for PvP anymore because you'll find that she's not so relevant. And therefore, you're actually going to wind her back a little bit to build her with Ocean Waves and Adamantine where she becomes a little bit more useful in PvE content, especially the Temporal Tower and Kronos. Now, next one, we have Fabrice. In fact, I'll actually, you know, I'll add like Windwalker over here. I think Windwalker is still pretty good for him. Right, so Windwalker, Avatara, Ocean Waves, Avatara. The Avatara is quite important for him to land his heal buff on his first skill, so that's quite important. HP, HP, speed as usual. Now, next, Falcon. I'm not going to discuss so much of his kit, but I just want to discuss more of his passive. So apparently his passive previously used to be broken, but actually it's not broken. They actually changed his passive back one step where it used to be previously, except that now he has a lower proc chance. I don't know why the developers keep playing around with Falcon's kit, like just stick to one and just stick with it. Now next time you have Hengria, I think Ocean Waves Adamantine is going to be the best choice for her. And then Jacob, Ocean Waves and Adamantine, as you can see over here, there are two ways they can build uh, Jacob, right? So the first way is going to be HP, HP Speed, which is very typical for most Jacob builds. The other one is going to be HP, HP Defense or HP, HP, HP or HP Defense, Defense basically just um, very little emphasis on speed but a lot more emphasis on your sustainability now the reason why you want to build him like the second way is because you want to speed tune your uh, pet runs so that he moves the last now if he moves the last he's guaranteed to use his second skill on the boss wave because you know you cleave the first two waves and therefore you shorten your run times by a little bit so that's the reason for this second kit over here now next we have Jiangman I do feel like she can be quite potent with the Zeus relic set because you know she has a lot of multi hits and a lot of AoE attacks and all that so I think Zeus can be quite useful for her then moving on to Laura okay so a lot of people ask how to build Laura this is how I would build her okay triple HP just like that uh, eventually you want to go Snow Dowager Adamantine so that you know when they attack you they have a chance of getting frozen so that's very dangerous for them to even try to approach you and let alone you know letting a Laura run around free like that she's very dangerous for her passive next one Lin Xiao I've discussed this before very typical War Machine or Hades Avatara this works very well eventually you're going to go on to Thor Avatara and there are some possible alternatives so, so this was actually introduced by one of my audience members so he actually suggested Ocean Waves because her second skill has a cooldown of 2 turns which means that with Ocean Waves you can potentially use your second skill twice in success session which is where most of her dps comes from so this is actually quite interesting it's something that i will probably test in the future but i'm just leaving it here to keep it on your radar now long mian yes windwalker adamantine ocean waves adamantine that's basically it right but for pvp right let's say if you want to go for full pvp and you need him to use his crowd control at the start you might want to give him light buff so that you know he definitely gets his turn so that's something that you can consider now lu yi and lin they are just typical dps builds now as for meredith this is the way i built her ocean waves and adamantine but obviously you can build her windwalker and adamantine Whatever it be, she just needs to land her third skill properly and she's all good. But she needs a lot of HP as well, so that you know her third skill can reduce more of the enemy's HP cap. Right, Mona is just going to be a Hades Avatara and that's basically it, that's where she ends. Now Nicole, like I said before, Light Above is going to be very good for PvP, but Ocean Waves I think is still going to be the way to go. Now for Nicole, okay, so I said Ocean Waves over here, but honestly I feel like actually Windwalker might be better as well, depending on, on like how you're using her, right? So if you're using her for PvP, I think Windwalker can make a lot of sense as well. So yeah, there you go, I just added Windwalker Adamantine and Wind Windwalker Light Above, that's about it. I think she works really well with any of these kits. Now next we have Pritzka. Okay, so Windwalker and Ocean Waves. The Zeus Relic set does not actually benefit his passive, so do take note of that. Okay, so I put this over here so that it's very obvious to you guys that, you know, Zeus does not work on him. Okay, so this is a very interesting one, right? So we have Renzi here with the typical Hades Avatar build, which is very straightforward, right? But there is actually another build that this is also one of the builds that my audience actually introduced to me, Snow Dowager Avatara. I feel like this can actually work very well because he's gonna survive on his standoff buff on his passive, right? Now, Snow Dowager is gonna make him very tanky by making sure that you know the enemies who attack you get frozen as well, so that's quite dangerous. He's very unlike Dona, who is not able to you know have a standoff buff and to survive a huge amount of damage. So, I think Renzi works really well with Snow Dowager, and I forgot to capitalize his name over here. Now moving on, Sander, I've talked about him so many times, right? Just basically Windwalker and anything, right? Windwalker Avatar works as well. And then Taylor, you know, typical DPS built with like a bit of lifesteal possibly. And here are the twins, okay? So the twins are going to be built very differently. So this is going to be the debuffer twin. This is going to be the damage dealing twin. 
So for the debuffer twin, you want to build him, you know, typically like a debuffer, Windwalker, Adamantine, Ocean Waves, Adamantine, just, you know, have his CC up very often, and you're going to build him with HP, HP, Speed, but as for Sia Chui, or rather the Death Guard Black, uh, you're going to build him with more damage. Now moving on to the legendaries, right, so we have Biondina, she's going to be War Machine, Avatar, Thor, Avatar, very straightforward, just crit damage, attack, attack. Now Cecilia, this one is actually quite interesting as well, she has a lot of builds that you can use her with, but honestly, in my opinion, I think she can just go with like a lot of tankiness, she don't really necessarily need a whole ton of speed. Now the reason why you may not need her with a whole ton of speed is because she just needs to be a sitting duck, you know, take all the damage and then when she dies, she revives her allies. But on the off chance that, you know, the enemy wants to target her first, she is super tanky and very hard to take down. So that makes her really strong in my opinion. Now moving on to Clara, there are two main builds, right? There is the Windwalker turn 1 advantage build. There is also the Ocean Waves skill cycling build, which I think works much better for me, especially if you're running a tanky DPS comp. If you're running a speed cleave, then you know Windwalker might be actually a better choice. Now Dona, very typical Hades about just 100% hit his avatar for the rest of his life. And Gabriel as well, Windwalker, Ocean Waves, these two are very good choices. But for PvP, you might want to have Light Above so that, you know, she guarantees the first turn that she can use her third skill, so that's quite important. Now, Hyde is also going to be Hades Avatar, just like Dona, except, except that he's going to be built with crit damage, defense, and HP. If you need more information on a height build, you can refer to Kovian's dislike videos. Then Jin Yu Yao, previously, I think she was really good with Astral Witchcraft, right? But now that's no longer the case. I mean, okay, honestly, you guys don't even know because that was in beta period. But I think now she's very good with Windwalker and Avatara. I think this is where she's like, perfect. Okay, just Windwalker is the best for her. But to be honest, I think even for PvP, I think Windwalker Avatara is going to be a better choice than Windwalker Light Above. So I may want to remove this, but I'm just going to leave it here because I think this can help some of you guys as well. Now, Louis and Liling, they're going to have the exact same builds man so it's just like war machine and hades or thor and avatar eventually so it's basically the same they're built exactly the same except that lewis needs a lot less crit rate than Liling. now moving on to lucas you can either build him windwalker ocean waves depending on you know you want to build him for pvp or what then ollie okay so ollie there are two different builds so in the early game right i would highly recommend that you build him more dpsc right so that you can partake in chronos 10 using him and he can be quite useful in protecting your allies from the single target pillar damage but eventually i feel like you know going tanky is going to be the way to go so ocean waves with Adamantine or Ocean Waves with Avatar, these could be quite useful, especially with a HP HP speed set. So this is just generally how I would use him. Now Raven, very straightforward, just like Windwalker or Ocean Waves, just you know a lot of speed, right? And then you just keep casting your third skill that way. Actually, you know, I think Ocean Waves is not really a very good choice. I feel like you know she just needs that turn one advantage, and that's about it. Now Sally, okay, so I would highly recommend you guys if you have not to try her with Astro Witchcraft. She is insane with Astro Witchcraft because when your allies take a turn, if they are stunned, they actually get out of the stun, which means that Astro Witchcraft actually pushes your allies faster to take their turns faster which is an insane kit with her don't forget that her third skill actually cleanses her allies when they take their turn right but of course eventually you know astro witchcraft doesn't really fall off in my opinion i think snow dowager is just another option so basically if anyone wants to take her out they're going to suffer a lot of freeze so that makes her so much tankier and so much more dangerous and people are not necessarily going to take her out instantly which is where i think she shines because the point of sally is to stay alive for as long as possible and that way you can protect the rest of your team so hp 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 or HP, HP defense. I think these two are very good. I wouldn't go with two defense mains just because her base HP is so much higher. Now next one we have Sienna. I will honestly prefer to go with the Windwalker kit because I think she's just more of a PvP expert than anything else. Uh, she, she is usable in PvE, that's for sure, but her cooldowns are way too long, so you need Ocean Waves for her to work properly. But the thing is, you're going to be relying a lot on Ocean Waves. Now you can take a look at uh, Tang Xuan, Tever, and Tie on your own. I'm just going to go on with Tricky, so I think Zeus Avatar is going to be the way to go. Honestly, I think I can just delete like early game and mid game. He's really not useful in early game and mid game. Only in the end game when you can farm Zeus Relic Set, that's when he becomes very powerful. Now for Unas, I think he's just really good throughout the entire game. Windwalker is probably going to be the way to go, so it depends on like, you know, you want to like land more defense breaks, you want to protect your allies a little bit more, either way works, especially, you know, if you're running him with Nama, I think Adamantine might make a lot of sense so that you give your Nama that shield buff at the start, which gives him one extra passive stack as well. So yeah, that's about it. So this is the spreadsheet, and obviously I don't have the video up here because I have not actually uploaded this video yet, but you can refer to this video or maybe this spreadsheet in the future. I'm going to make it public, of course. So I think this Google Sheet document will have like more sheets regarding like some of the stuff that I talk about in the future so that it can be like a one-stop shop for you guys, right? And I'm going to put this in my Discord server as well. I'll just have a link up somewhere in one of the channels so that you guys can refer to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Daddy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.